Well, hello, and welcome to another edition of the Wound Care Window. As most of you are aware, we have been under a deep freeze here in the uh, Midwest, and uh, that was uh, compliments of the polar vortex. The temperatures were uh, well below uh, freezing, well below zero, and with a wind chill factor, the temperatures actually got down into the minus 40 to minus 60 degree range. This uh, sort of weather condition certainly places uh, anyone at risk uh, for frostbite uh, in, when they are outdoors uh, with uh, exposed uh, tissue. I want to show you an example of a patient that uh, presented uh, to us with uh, frostbite. This photo shows the uh, dusky tips of his uh, uh, middle and uh, ring finger, as you'll see. Um, this patient uh, was imaged with a special imaging technology, and I thought you'd find this uh, use of near-infrared spectroscopy very interesting. Uh, Mr. Brandon Hoffman uh, is uh, an MA here in our clinic. Uh, he is a hopeful medical student uh, and has his application at several medical schools. And Brandon has been studying near-infrared spectroscopy, and I wanted to introduce you to him and have Brandon give uh, a brief introduction to near-infrared spectroscopy. This camera uses near-infrared spectroscopy to measure tissue oxygenation. So the camera itself uses a flash of near-infrared light, and it measures, it measures the reflection of the near-infrared light. Oxygenated and deoxygenated hemoglobin uh, differ in the reflection and absorption of the near-infrared light. Using this computer interface system, the camera can, can generate a computer model that's interactive and you can tap on the images and see the tissue oxygenation percentage uh, throughout the extremity you photographed. So we are using near-infrared spectroscopy at AZH Clinics here in Milwaukee, and this is an image of that same patient just a few seconds later using the Kent Imaging Near-Infrared Spectroscopy. And as you'll note, the tips of the uh, third finger and ring finger uh, show bluish discoloration. This clearly indicates less oxygenation. The patient was then treated with hyperbaric oxygen therapy and uh, wanted to show you the results that we achieved following the use of hyperbaric therapy. As you know, hyperbaric oxygen therapy can be a great adjunctive treatment uh, to the management of frostbite. The next image you see is uh, the treatment post-hyperbaric. What you'll notice of that uh, middle and index finger is that the uh, areas of duskiness have certainly improved and enhanced. Question is, does that correlate well with uh, increased perfusion? So we again image this uh, tissue with near-infrared spectroscopy and now look at the robust oxygenation of that tissue, especially where we had previously seen low oxygen values in the tip of the third and uh, fourth fingers. This is another view looking from a Palmer approach. This is pre-hyperbaric oxygen therapy. The next image shows the uh, same positioning of the hand with a near-infrared spectroscopy. And again, you notice the dusky changes on the uh, middle and ring finger. Following hyperbaric therapy, we have very impressive resolution of the dusky changes, again, suggesting a good clinical outcome. But does that correlate well with uh, increased oxygenation of the tissues and perfusion? Well, this is where near-infrared spectroscopy plays a great role. Here is near-infrared spectroscopy post-hyperbaric, and again, you see the impressive change in those distal fingertips. This illustrates well the use of uh, uh, near-infrared spectroscopy as an imaging technique to image tissues that we suspect of being hypoxic and poorly perfused, and this demonstrates a very nice improvement following hyperbaric oxygen therapy. We believe here at AZH that near-infrared spectroscopy will have a continuing and important role in the management of our patients from a clinical standpoint. Thank you again for joining us on this edition of the Wound Care Window.